Hello, I'm Atubo George and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we honor you today. Your word is truth and there is nothing as sweet as walking with you in understanding. Thank you because you're opening our hearts to understand your truth and your mercy. Thank you. Burdens are being lifted right now as we go into your truth and yokes have been destroyed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. Now I said, I'm going to be sharing with you this week on how to end the year. So, so important. I'm going to be sharing lots of information with you and they are all to prepare your heart right. Let's all turn your Bibles with me to Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, I shared with you last week, and from the first of the month, I think, you know, the Lord began to state this clearly. He said, listen, in this month of December, don't keep your attention on the news. Keep your attention on me and what I am saying. Praise God. Because see, God's not going to be telling us what the news will be saying. God's going to be telling us his mind. It might be opposite, most likely opposite of what the news is saying. <laughs> Praise God. So, but if you follow the word of God, if you follow the mind of God, the impact of what's happening that is being reported in the news will not be your portion. Praise God. So, I said Genesis chapter 12. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 3. Now, God speaking to Abraham here and he says, I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. Now look at this part, and this is, this is the part that we're emphasizing on. And in you, in who? Abraham. And in you, you know, then he was Abraham, then later Abraham, praise God. And in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Did you see that? He didn't say in you all the Jewish family. No. He didn't say in you all the family of your children. No. He said in you all the families of the earth. Wonderful. You see, God deals with us in families. What a bogus statement for God to make. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. How? In Abraham. So how is this going to work? Let me show you Genesis 18 and verse 18. Well, let, let me start from verse 17. Now this was when God met Abraham and was on his way to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And then he, he, he had a meeting with Abraham, so he was going on his way. Verse 17, And the Lord says, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? It says, verse 18, it says, Since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation. Now notice, it says, Abraham is going to, he said, surely. So the God is saying, this is what, this is, this is as sure as sure. Praise God. Abraham is going to become a mighty nation. Note that. Now, and it says, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Not in God now. In Abraham. Praise God. So, so God set a man to bless. And he's not just looking at that man. He's looking at all the nations of the earth being blessed because of this man. Listen, God is not wicked as some people have painted him. He is a loving God who has great and good plans for you. Think about it. Think about it. He is blessing Abraham. I was on his mind how to bless all the nations of the earth. So he's like, okay, I'm going to bring Abraham and set him up as a pattern. And in him, every nation of the earth, praise God, is going to be blessed. Praise God. They are going to be blessed. Now, this is God reinforcing what he said in Genesis 12. Now, let me show you something else. Genesis 22. Genesis 22 and verse 18. And there's something about verse 18 in all these verses. 
Praise God. He says, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, this was when Abraham uh, obeyed God to sacrifice Isaac. And just when he was about to cut his throat, praise God, Abraham meant business. And God said, hey, stop. Now, God began to speak and, and bless him. Now, look at what he said in verse 18, um, Genesis 22. In your seed, mm -hmm. in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Now, I want you to get this now. First of all, God says, in you, all the nations, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. God spoke that to Abraham when he commanded him to leave his father's house. So God just told him, Abraham, this is the plan. I want to bless all the families of the earth. So if you are going to be faithful before me, and then the whole world will be blessed. Okay. So now Abraham walked with God. He obeyed God. He left his father's house, followed God to the place that God showed him and said, this is the place. Okay, fine. And then God reinforcing this blessing again in chapter 18. He says, look, Abraham, every nation is going to be blessed because of you. Now Abraham was an old man. Now here, God speaking again and says, in your seed. Now it is becoming more detailed and it is moving from the one person to the next generation now. He says, in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. See why God said because of you? Now what, why, is, why, why is it because of him? Because Abraham obeyed the voice of God. And since he obeyed the voice of God, the families of the earth is qualified to receive the blessing of God. Question, how is God going to bless Alabrakasha? How is God going to bless all the families of the earth? How is he going to do that? Listen to me. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. It says in your seed. Now, let's, let's go to Galatians chapter 3. Book of Galatians. I want to show you something there. Galatians is in the New Testament. And we look at chapter 3. Now, look at verse 8. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 8. And the scriptures foreseen that God would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, In you all the nations shall be blessed. Now, He's referring to what happened in Abraham. Now he goes on to say, verse, verse 9. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Now let's jump down to verse, mm, verse 29. Verse 29. Now look at verse 29. It says, and if you are Christ." Then you are Abraham's seed. Uh -huh. God said in 22, Genesis 22, 18, that in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed. Now he says here that if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And heir according to the promise. Notice he didn't say heir to the promise. He said heir according to the promise. Now what's he talking about? He said in Abraham all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Then God now says in his seed. all the He didn't change what he meant. No, he didn't change what he meant. He was, now why is he doing this? He is telling you that the blessing is, has a relationship with a physical seed, not a spiritual. You know what I mean? Physical person, a person, not spiritual seed like the word. No, it's a physical, the blessing has to do with a physical person. So when he said here that if you are Christ, no, if you belong to Christ, if you are in Christ, if you are of the stock of Christ, now how do you get into the stock of Christ? That only happened when you got born again. See? Now, when you got born again, what happened? You were dismantled from your old lineage and in, in, your, your, you were planted in Christ or joined in Christ. 
That's why the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, what does it mean to be in Christ? It, now, what is Christ? Christ simply means the Holy Spirit, praise God, or the, the anointed one with all of his anointing. That's simply also saying the Holy Spirit, because he's the one that carries the anointing, and he is the anointing, so praise God. So, so now, he says, if you are Christ, so when the Holy Ghost overshadows you, that's what happens when you got born again. So when, when we receive Jesus Christ into our heart, it's not just the Holy Jesus coming to live into our the Holy Ghost overshadowed us and then Christ was better in us that's what happened that's what happened so that's what happened on the day of Pentecost when the disciples were gathered together in one place that's what happened see the Bible said the Holy Ghost filled all the room where they were sitting and, and suddenly the Bible was and they were filled with the Holy Ghost what, what happened they were baptized in Christ so the Holy Ghost surrounded them and then also they were filled with the Holy Ghost in their hearts. See, So that's how it works. So he is all around us baptizing us. Now what does it mean baptizing Christ? To be dipped into Christ is as simple as that. So you are dipped in Christ. See, so that's what it means to be baptized in Christ. And then the same moment you are dipped in Christ... You are filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Now, you know, the, theologians or, or, or religion have spoiled this whole thing. They've spoiled the understanding of this thing. The truth is, the day you got born again, you could have spoken in tongues that very day. Why? The same Holy Ghost that got you saved. How, does he, how did he get you saved? He baptized you. And the same one came to live inside of you that very moment. Not a second experience. It is that same moment. Praise God. But see, because you didn't know. You didn't understand. So you, you got born again. The next thing you say, you have to go through a class and, and several classes that, that you receive the Holy Spirit. Well, that's not what it was from the beginning. And I don't believe that is really what it still is. They are just playing with your mind. If you understand what I'm sharing with you, it's as simple as that. You've been born again, you can as well start speaking in tongues. The Spirit of God will be there to give you utterance. Praise God. So, now, the moment you got born again, you became attached to Christ. Now, Christ is living in you. So, you are now connected to the root of Christ. Are you following me? You're connected to the root of Christ. And if that is you, then he's telling you that you are the seed that God spoke about in Abraham. Now, so you think about this. Every family that has one person that is born again, that family has a testimony that the blessing of God has come to them. Every family on earth. So you look around your family, at least one person should be born again. Praise God. Look at the families around you. One person should be born again. Now, this is where we have a lot of work to do as God's children. We have been sent, we have been commanded by Jesus Christ to bring the gospel to every family. You know why? God is looking for how to bless the whole earth. He's looking for how to bless every family. So you listening to me right now, if, if you don't, if you can't tell that somebody in your family is born again. Someone in your family is the seed of Abraham. Then you become it. Praise God. So the testimony will be that the blessing of God have come to your family. If you can vouch that, oh, there is one Christian in my family, then you be the Christian in your family. What does it mean to be the Christian in your family? You be the one who will receive Christ. Even right now, you can receive Christ. I mean, all it is, as I'm sharing these things, which is resonating in your heart. Now, why is it resonating in your heart? Because you're a seed of God. So all you just need to do is consciously acknowledge and accept. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to be a blessing in my family. I want to fulfill your word. And the blessing has come to my family. Praise God. Yes! And you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and he fills you 
and then God stamps it that the blessing has come to that family. Isn't it amazing that you are the one that have become God's reference point to your family? My time is up. Praise God. I'll continue tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.